Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also promised us a good life to those who follow truly the religion of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse 97, whoever works righteousness, man or woman, and has faith, verily to him we will give a new life, a life that is good and pure, and we will bestow upon such their reward according to the best of their actions. So these people will be given a good life. Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, said that if the kings knew the happiness and pleasure that we feel in our hearts, they would come and try to take it away from us, from the tips of their swords. If these wealthy billionaires and kings and rulers knew of the happiness that a person of Iman feels, they would kill us to get it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Quran in chapter 20 verse 124 that, but whosoever turns away from my message, verily for him is a very distressful life. So you will find this evident. I don't even need to explain this. People who go away from the religion of Islam, you find no matter how wealthy they are, no matter how rich they are or how much they have acquired, their lives are very distressful. The third promise of Allah is the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he mentions in Surah Al-Hajj chapter 22 verse 38 that verily Allah will defend from ill and all evil those who believe. Allah will himself defend you. Verily Allah loves not any that is a traitor to faith or shows in gratitude. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like the ungrateful and he will himself protect from all evils and all ills those who are true upon the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that these people will be taken out from darkness and put into light. In Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 257 Allah says, Allah is the protector of those who have faith. From the depths of darkness He will lead them forth into light. Of those who reject faith, the patrons are the evil ones. From light they will lead them forth into the depths of darkness. They will be companions of the fire to dwell therein forever. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give light, will give uh, knowledge, and take people out of this darkness and bring them up into light. Similarly, Allah tells us the promise that these people will have no fear nor will they grieve. In Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 277, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Those who believe and do righteous deeds and establish regular prayers and regular charity will have their reward with their Lord. On them shall be no fear nor shall they grieve. And we are told of a story of Abdul Salam who is a scholar in the past. May Allah have mercy upon him who went to visit a tyrant ruler with his students. And first he began to speak with him very softly and the matter then began to heat up and he spoke a little louder, a little louder until he was uh, almost rude to him because of the, the, the sheer defiance that was being shown by that tyrant. So much so that the students became scared and they began to hide a little bit. And <clears throat> later on when they <clears throat> stepped outside, they asked him that, how come you were talking to this tyrant ruler like this? I mean, we were afraid that he would chop our heads off. And Abdul Salam mentioned that when I imagined the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this tyrant became in front of me smaller than a cat. So this is the fearlessness that is given to a believer by having strong Iman. He does not fear anything, anyone whatsoever. He is perfectly okay to speak the truth and he is not afraid of the consequences. What is going to happen? What will people say? What will this person say? Maybe they will kill me. Maybe they will put me in prison. No, no fear whatsoever. This is with Iman, the fear just disappears. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also promised maghfira for these people as it is mentioned in Surah Al-Maidah chapter 5 verse 9 that to those who believe and do righteous deeds, Allah has promised forgiveness and a great reward. And similarly Allah says in Surah Zumar chapter 39 verse 53, O my servants who have transgressed against their own souls, despair not of the mercy of Allah, for Allah forgives all sins and He is oft forgiving most merciful. So the forgiveness of Allah and the mercy of Allah and the maghfara is there, but the key is that you have to ask for that repentance. You have to be willing to repent before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, a lot of us now fear that when we accept Islam wholeheartedly, people will hate us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something very different in the Holy Quran. He mentioned in Surah Maryam, chapter 19 verse 96, that verily those who believe and work deeds of righteousness, the most gracious will bestow love for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put love for these people in the hearts of men. That even so much so that the, the 
commentators on the Quran mention that if you displease Allah by pleasing the creation, then Allah will be displeased with you and will make the creation also displeased with you. And if you please Allah by displeasing the creation, then Allah will be pleased with you and He will also make the creation pleased with you. This is again one of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not see it. We have our own question marks. What will people say this and that? But once you are firm on the Iman, people begin to have respect for you. You get izza in this dunya. You are not uh, like that story says that a crow who wants to mix in with the peacocks. He puts up a few of the feathers of the peacocks and try to mix in with them. And then he is rejected by the crows and he is rejected by the peacocks. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that if you are firm on the Iman, you will get izza and you, people will love you in this dunya. Similarly, you also get a promise of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will befriend you. And who else do you want as your friend than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse 68 that without doubt amongst men the nearest of kin to Ibrahim are those who follow him as are also the messenger and those who believe. And Allah is the wali, the protecting friend of those who have faith. So Allah Akbar, if Allah is your friend, you need nobody else with you. If Allah becomes your friend. And the last promise that we can mention is the promise of Jannah to those people who are submitters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who believe and do righteous deeds for the sake of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 25 that give glad tidings to those who believe and work righteousness that their portion is gardens beneath which rivers flow. Every time they are fed with the fruits therein, they say, why this is what we were fed with before. For they are given things in similitude. And they have, they have therein companions pure and holy. And they abide therein forever. So this promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be sufficient. And should outweigh any of the other promises. That we get all of these benefits in the dunya. This promise of the akhirah should be reason enough for us to be submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are not, we are defined, the Jannah is described to us as things that the eye hasn't seen, the ears haven't heard, the mind has not imagined. That is what Jannah is. But however, you need to work for this Jannah. It will not come by you just sitting and doing nothing and just hoping that it will, it will actually come to you. There is a path that needs to be followed and there is some, stri uh, there is some striving, some jihad that needs to be done in working for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Az-Zumar chapter 9 verse 20, that such is the promise of Allah, never does Allah fail in His promise. So all of these promises, I've only mentioned about nine of them. There are many more in the Holy Quran. Uh, and all of these promises are true. Success in the dunya and the akhirah. So we, all of us now, all of us have the capacity to become strangers if we wish to be. That desire is the first thing that has to be there. That do we desire to be strangers? Do we wish to be like the companions of the Holy Prophet Do we wish to submit to this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you have a fear in your heart of Allah, even the slightest fear in, in your heart of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have a disconnect for this dunya, you know that there is something wrong with this dunya, what I'm being fed through the media and all of this, this cannot be the answer to my problems. If you feel these things, then you have what it takes to be a, be a stranger. One of the ghuraba. Even if you take the first step now, you plant the first seed now here today, at least Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you have come on that straight line, that path that leads straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that path of Sarat al-Mustaqeem, that you have now put yourself on that road. Maybe a lot of us find ourselves that we are on different roads, but if we just get on that road that leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if He takes our life away now, at least we can say to Allah that Allah, I was on that road. I had committed and I had made this niya in my heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will submit to you. I will become one of the ghurabah. 